morning everyone welcome to our morning worship and prayer revelation chapter 4 verse 11 worthy are you our lord and god to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they existed and were created god just like this verse in revelation we echo the same as we worship you this morning you deserve all glory and honor and power we worship you in jesus name amen let's worship god through this song hope for the weary strength for the faint fountain of mercy Peace to the restless, breath in our lungs, lover and friend. Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel, here with us.
you and we choose to start our day declaring your praise and we love you and commit this time to you in Jesus name. Amen. Morning everyone. Welcome to our morning worship and prayer. I want to ask you this question. What is the most beautiful sight that you have ever seen? The most amazing breathtaking view or sight you've ever seen in your entire life? For us, for some of us probably, it's a spectacular view. Probably a sunset, the sea, the shorelines, the sea meeting the horizon, probably a starry sky, probably a sea of clouds, probably a sunset. So for some of us, it's probably a spectacular view. But for some of us, it could be a person. Perhaps it's the very first time you laid your eyes on your spouse. Perhaps it's the very first time you held your child or your children in your arms. For some of us, it's a breathtaking view. For some of us, it's a person. For the Apostle John, it was both. Breathtaking, the most amazing, magnificent view. And he beheld a person. Revelation chapter 5. Could I invite you to open your Bibles with me? To Revelation chapter 5, verse 11 to 14. Revelation 5, 11 to 14. Then... I looked and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders the voice of many angels numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing and I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and in the sea, and all that is in them, saying, To him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb, be blessing, and honor, and glory, and might, forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped the word of the Lord for us this morning. As we continue talking about our mission of who God called us to be according to His Word. We exist to honor God by establishing Christ-centered, Spirit-empowered, socially responsible churches and campus ministries in every nation. We want Christ at the center of all we do, and we see a glimpse of that in the heavens. When God restores and redeems the entire creation, the center of all that is worship is Christ Himself. And if you've been with us in Victory for quite a while, probably if you've visited one of our locations and congregations, you've seen this on the walls or on the screens. Jesus, period. Christ at the center. What does it mean? We want to learn from what the Apostle John saw from his vision. Imagine one of the most spectacular, breathtaking, magnificent views he has experienced, being invited to the throne room of heaven. The book of Revelation, people have different views, different emotions when they read this book, actually. Some would be fearful because they think that it's a view on the end times. Some would be hopeful and happy because they get a glimpse of history. Some view the book of Revelation as a historical book of what was, what is, what is to come. Some see it as a future prophetic word on the end times. Some see it as an encouragement for the persecuted church. But you see, there is room for all of those, view those views. But regardless of whatever view you have when it comes to the book of Revelation, you see at the core of the book of Revelation, it is a revelation of Jesus. It is a revelation of Jesus Christ. So to miss the revelation of who Jesus is, is to miss the whole point of the book. Oftentimes, we're consumed about the end times, the Antichrist, and the prophecies, the imagery of the book. But to miss Jesus in this book is to miss the whole point. And we don't want to miss Him. We don't want to miss that. The revelation, 
the book of Revelation is really a revelation of Jesus. And let's see what we can learn on how to be really living a life of a Christ-centered life from this book. It says there in the passages that we read, the central, central to the worship of heavenly beings is Christ. But backtrack for a bit. Why were the elders and the creatures in heaven and earth worshiping that way? Giving Jesus the glory, the honor, the blessing, the power. Backtrack a chapter before that. In chapter 4 of the book of, the Re of Revelation, the Apostle John was given a, a vision, an imagery of the throne room of heaven. And he saw God seated on the throne, majestic, glorious, and radiant. And heavenly beings and elders with crowns would worship and say, Holy 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 and elders with crowns 24 elders with crowns would bring down their crowns to him who is worthy of worship and from that throne would come out a scroll and they looked from heaven and earth and it seems like no one could open that scroll but in chapter 5 revelation chapter 5 verse 5 to 6 we see jesus revealed revelation chapter 5 verse 5 to 6 and one of the elders said to me Weep no more. Behold, the Lion of Judah, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. There is one who is worthy to open that scroll that contains the words of God. In verse 6, And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain. We see in those verses, Jesus revealed the Lion of Judah and the Lamb that was slain. In Jesus, He is both. The Lion. When you look at the imagery of a lion, the lion is a top predator in the jungle, or so they say, the king of the jungle. Ferocious, fearsome, awesome, fast. Nothing on the jungle could withstand that lion. And Jesus is that for us. He's the Lion of Judah. Fearful, awesome, strong and mighty but we're given another picture that gentle lamb that sacrificial lamb of god that was slain jesus being revealed and as we talk about being christ-centered and living christ-centered lives we get the lesson here it's about jesus it's about jesus the lion of judah the lamb that was slain john the baptist said it this way behold the lamb of god who takes away the sin of the world it's about Jesus, Jesus being revealed. And continuing on with the passages in Revelation chapter 5, verse 7 to 9, not just that Jesus is revealed, but that Jesus is worshipped. Jesus is worshipped in verse 7 to 9. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp, and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Imagine, picture of the prayers of God's people are like incense to the Lord, sweet-smelling aroma of worship. Verse 9, And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals. We learn there, Christ-centered life is a life of worship unto Jesus. Jesus is worthy of our worship. Question, when we get to receive answered prayers, when we get to have achievements in life, who gets the most glory? Who receives the most worship? I pray that just like the heavenly host, it would be Jesus who would receive all our worship. He is worthy of our worship. Jesus is worthy of our worship. So we learn that it's about Jesus and it's about His glory. Continuing on in verses 9 to 10, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom of priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. We see what he has done. His blood that was shed has ransomed people for him. And those he ransomed, he turned into a kingdom of priests. It's about Jesus. It's about his glory. But this time we see it's about His work, His mission, and His kingdom. Living a Christ-centered life is a life of living out His work, His mission, His kingdom. The work is His. 
the joy of being part of it is ours. We partner with God in what He's doing here and now. And when we meet Jesus face to face, it's going to be about this. We will worship Him for the work He has done of ransoming people for God and turning us into a kingdom of priests for His glory. So we see in the heavenly host, they worship Him because of who He is. The Lion of Judah, the Lamb that was slain, they worship Him for His glory. He is worthy of worship. They worship Him for His work, His kingdom, and His mission. And as a people of God, I pray that we too would echo with the heavenly host and worship Him. What's the most breathtaking, amazing scene that you have seen in your entire life? Scripture promises us that one day, we too will see nothing in comparison to the best views we've seen in this life. We will see the most magnificent, most spectacular, most amazing, breathtaking view of all time. Seated on the throne is our mighty God, Jesus, the Lion of Judah, the Lamb that was slain. And we will fall down and worship. May who He is cause us to worship. May the beauty of His sacrifice cause us to worship. May His work cause us to worship. As for the heavenly host, there was no other rightful response but just to lay down their crowns, fall down, and worship Him for who He is. As you come into our services, you'd see the sign, Jesus, period. I pray that that would also be the picture of our lives. Jesus, period. Christ at the center. Christ at the center of our work. Christ at the center of our parenting. Christ at the center of our marriage. Christ at the center in our finances. Christ at the center in everything we do. Jesus, period. That He would get the glory. That it would be about Him and that we get to partner with Him in His work, in His kingdom, in His mission. And we echo with that Revelation 5 would say, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. To Him who sit on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Why don't we declare that as we sing this song again? Jesus Jesus You're the anchor of echo with what that song says and Lord we say to you be the highest glory the highest honor 
the Lion of Judah, the Lamb that was slain. It's about you. May our lives be about you. May our lives be so Christ-centered that it would be fully given to your work, your kingdom, your mission. The work is yours, God. The joy of being part of it is ours. And Lord, with everything we say, we love you and we give you the highest praise. In Jesus' name, amen. In everything you do today, may Jesus be the center. Worship him in all you do. God bless you. Have an amazing day ahead.